I'm sitting on a hill today taking notes again. Before people really remember and long before recorded events inside of Evermore, it's said the world was ruled by these war moths. Ruled is a heavy word, so let's just say they were naturally governing the hillsides. At least that's what I've come to understand. I've come to know them as much as they'll and wish for me to know and I'm okay with that. For some reason they have taken a liking to me and let me roam the hillsides and observe them and even spend time with them. I have vague memories of them in my dreams that I don't fully understand as the line between reality and sleep to me seems a bit blurry at times. I do hum their songs a lot. They fascinate me. Dark shadowy figures with glittering transparent wings. They have a strange ability to change the speed of their wings, which already are much quicker than any earthly creatures. Much faster than any hummingbird for sure. As they change the speed of their wings they alter the vibration of the air and sound waves as they hover. Giving them a unique ability to make sound and melodies as they hover. They stand about 8 feet tall in a slender triangular shape although they can look very different at times. They have many wings, some for flying and some for stabilization which allow them to move rather oddly and in any direction quite quickly. The lower wings, about 50 sets or so, run down their spines and along their tails. Each set a little smaller and more precise as to its purpose. A tail with wings can do a lot of things they say. Decorating their legs and torso are feather-like scales that vibrate and control flight as well. By altering their wings they can take on many shapes and generally appear as black triangles hovering in the distance. At the base of their tails are color cells attached to 12-inch stems, similar to a rat's tail. The glowing cells are liquid sacs similar to the bellies of fireflies and the luminescent blood of underwater creatures. In the dark they can actually simulate a small swarm of flies rather nicely, moving each cell in various ways and independently from each other. They can also illuminate the dark in a bright flash. Blinding prey, which comes in handy for avoiding dangerous situations and gathering midnight snacks. I suppose. Sometimes they sing and create quite the spectacle on the hillsides at night. Their heads appear to almost hover inside of the upper wing base. Which is large and protrudes from the shoulders, and when their red eyes are lit in the darkness they can appear quite menacing indeed. Their heads are shaped like bats with small pointed ears. They communicate through telepathy and odd wing bursts of sound waves which can travel miles across open land and can almost knock you off your feet. They can and will bite, although they are normally docile creatures with immense powerful claws at the ends of each main wing. They are intelligent and somewhat peaceful and generally keep to themselves unless provoked. They do however hunt at night and eat large game, large men included and make travel through the dark woods a little unsafe for even a third tier swordsman. Though conflicts with war moths and men are generally uneventful in this time. There was a time long ago when men and war moths were at war. A great king named Lord Krell decided his kingdom would be best without the threat of war moths obstructing his shipments to Bok and the outlining cities of Evermore, and he decided to pay quite handsomely for war moth wing pelts. Of course this didn't go over well with the war moths, and so they had a little feast themselves on Lord Krell's behalf him included in the end, so goes the story of the great war and the human mage hero Jonathan Hadda who stood beside the leader of the war moths, Tyok, known only by his strangely unique and ominous hovering posture and wing patterns, ultimately defeating the great armies of Lord Krell. How long war moths live or where they come from is unknown. As is the fate of Mr. Hadda, who disappeared in the Black Forest after the war. It's said that he decided to live amongst the war moths, as he didn't really enjoy the company of men, 
It's rumored that he was creating his own magic based on old text found in the company of the war moths. But no one knows for certain. I like them, I think I can relate to Mr. Hadder and I'm happy Zabal graced me with his name.